paycheck coming late. Sorry. I don't like the look of this. Not one bit. I know you've only been with us for a few months. Maybe you're aware of the trouble Amy's been having. A small mom and pop shop like Rose and Daughters can't compete with the bigger guys. Don't tell Amy I sent this to you. Also, I'm starving, so I'm going to grab some fast food before taking the hearse through the car wash. Two birds, one stone, and swinging back home. Do you want anything? A beef and cheddar. I'm going to take a hearse through the drive through Of course, it freaks people out. I love it. They get so awkward. This, the... The comedic effect from this guy. <laughs> Let me know I'm heading out in 15 minutes. Paycheck coming late. This is embarrassing. It seems I miscalculated some of our income. I don't have enough to pay you this week. Would it be terribly inconvenient? I cut you a check for next week instead. If you need the money urgently, please let me know. I feel terrible about this whole thing. I can cut you a check for my personal account if need be. I'm so sorry about this. I'm sure you won't happen again. It's not good. Hopefully it's a one-time thing. I don't want to see another another one of these in my email. If you've been a long-time subscriber to oh, LGBT funerals, respect. If you've been a long-time subscriber to our emails, follow us on social media. You've no doubt heard about the misgendering that transgender people are at times subjected to during funerals. There have been notable situations where trans women have had their wishes overruled by their families, have had their hair cut, are buried under the wrong names, and subjected to the wrong pronouns in their obituary announcements. We care a lot about this because we believe in treating every person with the same level of compassion, respect, and care. And this absolutely extends to pronouns and respecting the deceased wishes as per their lived experiences. The CDC's Funeral Director's Handbook on Death Registration and Fetal Death Reporting offers the fraught directive Enter male or female based on observation. Do not abbreviate or use other symbols. If sex cannot be determined after verification with medical records, inspection of the body, or other sources enter unknown, do not leave this item blank. Leaving it up to observation obviously enters into a world of issues since bodies can be so different and because of ingrained bias, people can draw incorrect assumptions based on their own inaccurate observations. California has passed what is known as the Respect After Death Act, which states that the death certificate must reflect the deceased gender identity as they lived it. So step in the right direction. I wonder, like, let's say you're a trans person and you die. And they have to, like, write up the death certificate, right? And I don't, I don't know if you have time to, like, when does that get corrected? Because, like, let's say nobody's around to, like, ask what, what this person's pronouns are. I'm, I'm not saying it shouldn't be followed. I'm just like, how do you follow this in a situation where the person is deceased and you have no next of kin to verify? What do you do? How do you find out how they lived their life? Uh, I'm just, I'm curious. How do you, how do you make that work? I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying, I'm just like, what do you do? <laughs> people who are trans deserve the, the same respect and death that people who are cisgender receive. Absolutely. Misgendering and death takes away this respect. It can also inflict hurt and trauma on spouses and friends that survive the deceased. What can we do as funeral direct directors? Listen to the people who come into your office. In America, especially some marriages may not be recognized as legal depending on the laws around same-sex marriage, but this does not mean you're not dealing with two people who've loved each other in the same way as another couple. Listen, learn, and always be respectful. While you have to work with the next of kin, your duty is also to ensure the deceased receives the utmost respect in their burial. If a funeral is to honor the deceased, then do that honor them. So what are you saying? <laughs> like, what do you do if the family member is like, insi insists on misgendering a trans person? How do you follow that directive of honor them if the family isn't? What do you do in that situation? I don't even remember. I said, okay, I'm on it, but today's funeral died of standard cremation. Okay. Yes. 
<laughs> I'm like, wait, what? So my mom was cremated. Before we cremate, we need to prepare her body, okay? Brought clothing and jewelry for her to wear. It's important to remove these before the cremation process. I think we removed... I think we were asked if we wanted stuff removed, but she was definitely cremated with her clothing on. And then I think they asked us if they're to if we wanted like her jewelry, which we did. Um, we did take her jewelry, but she definitely had her clothes. Wait, place it on the purple tray. Click and drag the round identification tag. Oh, this one. Place it in the coffin. Oh, okay. And we were present for all of it. So like they gave us her jewelry, we watched her go into the thing. Oh, right here. This is the cremulator. Contrary to popular belief, cremation doesn't turn bodies into ash so much as bone fragments. Using the cremulator, we break these bone fragments down into ash-like remains. Start by placing the urn in the cremulator. Click and drag the bone fragments. Click and drag the urn back into the counter. And then place your jewelry into the urn. Or I will like that. There we go. Click the urn's lid. There we go. And we did a, an open casket funeral and then a cremation afterwards. She would have hated this music. She never wanted her funeral to be so sad. She would have wanted us smiling. She said so. Oh. It's hard not to be sad, though. My husband wants to be cre cremated, and then he wants us to do, like, I don't know, go to a bar and have drinks and play loud music and <laughs> do happy stuff. She fought really hard. She was proud of herself. She never gave up. Glad she was cremated and not in, like, an open casket or something. Seeing her like that, I don't know if I could have. At least we all got to say goodbye. She would have liked that. It was actually nice for me, because when uh, she passed, and I didn't get to see her until after they'd like already embalmed her, and it was it was really nice for me to see her body just to like confirm in my mind, because to just to know that she was gone, and then to go and be with my dad and like walk through the house where. I knew she would have been like, I like I knew she wasn't there, but part of me was still expecting her to just walk around the corner at every second, and so to actually see her um, when I went to the when I went to the funeral home was actually just a really comforting moment. Like my mind finally settled, and it was like, okay, this is where she is, and yes, that was hard on some level, but it was also just. I think my mind, like, even though I knew she was gone, like, I was still, my mind was still looking for her and trying to find her. Uh, and so it was just, it was just really nice to see her and in that way for my mind to, like, figure it out and, and stop looking for her, if that makes sense. This is nice in a weird way. She'd like that we're all here talking. She always tried to keep the family together. 
The food's delicious. I know that's where these crab cakes are perfect. <laughs> I'm glad you like the food. February. Oh, we're... we got our coffee. Hi, all. It is a, with a very heavy heart I write to you to let you all know that Rose and Daughters will no longer be in business. I had no idea how to start this email, and resources I googled told me that would be best and easiest way to break the ice. Be direct, but remorseful, Google said. The truth is, I don't really know what to say. Since my father passed away, I've done my best to make Rose and Daughters warm and friendly to anyone who could choose to use our services. It was my memorial to him, the original Rose, in a lot of ways, and you've all become like family, including you, Charlie, our most recent addition. But it's been getting harder to make ends meet. Rent is going up in the neighborhood, and I'm finding less and less like I have the energy for this business. There's a lot of competition from other funeral homes, larger corporations than we are that can take on more business, offer more impressive services. You know the way it goes. So we've been bought or I sold either way soon. Hillside Heritage Enterprises, Inc., a company that owns many funeral homes in the city and across the country, will replace Rose and Daughters starting from the beginning of next month. Same building, same name. They're keeping the name Rose and Daughters Funeral Home for tax purposes, though honestly, I'm trying hard not to just see it as a move on their part to keep up the image. Yeah, that was my thought. That it's a family-run business. I don't know how I feel about that, but I also don't know if there's anything I can do at this point either. I've signed the papers. At least my father's legacy is still intact somewhat. They have a good reputation and have agreed to keep you all on. That's nice. That's that's good. Um, they're not going to just throw everybody out. That was one of my stipulations that I would sell as long as you all weren't without a job. That's really great. Sorry I didn't tell you in a more personal way. I would have loved to have had a company lunch, but admittedly, I didn't have the heart to tell you in person. This was easier for me. Please understand. Oh. Thought you'd like to see this thank you note. I'm extremely grateful that you were able to accommodate our request for my sister's funeral. It was a beautiful service. She would have been happy with it. Such a weird thing to say, isn't it? Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. We see the note about the pacemaker. That can, they can be tricky. Yes, if there were any special instructions we wanted to pass along, please cremate my father. He has a pacemaker too. The doctor told me that would need to be removed. Okay. I don't know what to do. I thought I would forward this to you. In situations like this, we typically connect people like Ryan with a grief counselor or other professionals who can help him. Sometimes we get emails like this when people don't know where else to turn. It's difficult. Family isn't always the most reliable for some people. Usually I'd be happy to connect him, but I'm feeling a little tired today, not my usual self. It would be good for you to start building these kind of relationships on your own. Hi, Amy. I know this email might be a bit odd. You said if I was ever having troubles, I should reach out and you would know somebody I could talk to about all of this. I just don't know what to do now. I know my grandmother lived a full, good life and was very happy and that she's not in any pain now, but I still feel empty. I've never felt this empty before. What am I supposed to do now? I thought I was stronger than this. Can you refer, to, refer me to someone to talk to? I don't want to freak out my mom right now. She's dealing with enough with work and the will and trying to just be the best mom she can. I need somebody to tell me it'll be okay. Thank you. I'm sorry for being an inconvenience, Ryan. And we can't like respond to this at all she just sent it to us and <laughs> like it's just gonna sit here in my inbox charlie i've been playing a new game when things are slow at work it's called tales from the crypt sweeper get it get it it's like minesweeper but way harder like seriously it's really really difficult i thought my minesweeper game was on point after working that overnight front desk job at that hotel for three years but i must have gotten rusty anyway instead of mines you want to avoid graves so you don't disturb the adorable ghost. The main character also kind of looks like you. Want to start a healthy competition? High score gets to pick the restaurant we go to when one of us is in town next. Keep on protecting Earth with green burials. You've lived your life mindful of the environment, doing your part to reduce pollution and generally help out when you can. Why not continue doing that even in death? At least that's the thinking for a lot of people who are turning to green or natural burials. Natural cemeteries are becoming more popular and are focused on a few rules, mainly 
it's that bodies aren't allowed to be embalmed with chemicals that can damage the environment. And bodies must be buried in a biogradable shroud or casket. Not only is this better for the environment, it's also cheaper. At Union Cemetery in Ontario, Canada, a natural bur burial is just over a thousand. So better for the people, the environment, just maybe not so good for big business. Let's not forget people. It's still a business after all. Yeah, it really sucks, like, how much... How capitalized the death business is. Like, the, you really shouldn't... After a family member dies, you really shouldn't be paying thousands and thousands of dollars to handle their burial. It's, like, ridiculous. But really, why go green? Green burials help preserve natural resources, work to reduce carbon emissions, protect the health of those preparing bodies, and restore preserve natural habitats. Embalming fluid tends to contain formaldehyde, and funeral directors report a higher incidence of leukemia. Really? Going green and not using toxic chemicals for embalming helps protect funeral directors while at the same time lessening the impact we have on the environment after we're gone. We here at Funerals Monthly think green burials are pretty cool. What do you think? Reply and let us know. I didn't realize formaldehyde, like obviously don't eat it or inject it into your body, but I didn't realize just working with it was... That was another, you know, the reviews for this game was like, oh, I learned a lot of things I didn't know before and that's definitely holding true. For me, personally, I want to be cremated and then there's there's a some kind of company will put your ashes into a pot and then plant you as a tree in some forest and I really I personally like I love my mom loved the ocean and I just love a good forest. So I'm like <laughs> make a tree out of me please and I will be like, that's, that's what I want. Um, my mom also wanted to be cremated, and she was. Um, and there's a company I found that will put your ashes into concrete and then drop you in the ocean to restore uh, reefs that have been destroyed. And so the fish will, it's, it's to build new reefs in the ocean as a habitat for fish and I want to do that for for mom eventually. I still have her ashes, but eventually I want to put her in the ocean that she loved. Mr. Reyes came directly from the hospital. We don't have to worry about removing any valuables from him, as the family did not provide any for us to include. However, Mr. Reyes has a pacemaker we'll need to remove. A pacemaker we need to remove before cremation. Because pacemakers or batteries, they'll explode <laughs> inside the hot heat of the cremation machine. We definitely don't want that. Okay. And... Oh, okay. Click on the forceps to drag the pacemaker. Oh, that seems very easy. <laughs> uh, place the identification tag. And that's generally just like a plain pine box or whatever that they put you in for cremation. Like my mom had a, a casket that we just rented for the for the viewing. And then pine box. Eh, well, I gotta do this first. <laughs> Come on. Go back on the counter. Thank you. Amy will take the urn to the funeral parlor. And then we head out. I don't remember the funeral workers mingling with us at the funeral. Like, they were... There was another room, and they were, like, off in the other room if we needed something, but they didn't walk around and talk to the family. I wonder if he ever liked me. He was nice to me. 
I don't know. Never seemed like he really cared if I was there or not. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh goodness. I always told him to quit smoking, of course he never listened to me, so that figures. What do you want to do after this? It's pretty nice out. Let's change and go find a patio somewhere? Sounds good, I could really use a beer right now. Did I ever tell you about the time we tailgated? Did you ever end up clearing the air with your father? No, we talked a few times, but not really. Sounded like a difficult man. He was stubborn. That's just it, stubborn. February. I'm curious about what kind of changes we're gonna get going from a mom and pop to a corporate whatever. Thought I'd pass this along to you. Thank you, Note. Thank you for the service the other month. I apologize if I was abrupt. It was kind of a shock for me. I didn't feel comfortable with the whole process. He wasn't supposed to die yet. It hasn't been easy. Charlie, I was hoping you wouldn't have to confront the situation, yet, anyways, they're never easy. Rose and Daughters has been asked to prepare the body of a young man who took his own life. He had a will prepared and asked for cremation. But the families demanded a traditional burial instead. Unfortunately, he didn't make anyone his power of attorney, or didn't have any witnesses sign his living will, or his advance directive regarding those wishes. So the family's legal in the r legally in the right to do whatever they want with his body. It's unfortunate. We have to do what his family wishes. Matthews graciously offered to take this on if you are uncomfortable with the subject. Instead, we have a second body you can prepare for funeral we're hosting later in the afternoon. Charlie, is suicide something you're comfortable with dealing with? Okay, I thought the question was, are we comfortable with preparing him for a burial instead of... Uh, instead of a cremation? But is the question, am I comfortable with suicide? Disregard our son's will as it concerns matters of his burial. He was clearly not thinking right and didn't know what he really wanted. <sighs> Alright, that statement, uh, that bothers me. That upsets me. <laughs> I'm upset with that statement. <sighs> He clearly wasn't thinking right. I didn't know what he wanted. I'm gonna move- I'm gonna move on. <laughs> you hate mushrooms so much, I found the perfect thing for you. I've been thinking about death. I know, shocker, look what you've done to me. I think I want this mushroom suit. No, it's not called that, but I can't remember the name of it. I'm writing to you on my phone, so I don't feel like Googling it right now. Anyway, the idea is that it's a biogradable suit that the deceased wears. It's made with what people call biomix. Mushrooms, other microorganisms that help to decompose bodies, neutralize toxins, and provide nutrients for the soil, for plants. I think this one company even offers casket liners for use in green caskets. I think this is what I want. It'll be just like Hannibal. Wait, don't tell people I said that, okay? But seriously, it's pretty cool. Love all the death innovation happening. We might as well do something when we're in the ground, you know? Think about it. Let me know your thoughts. I want all of your thoughts. If not this, maybe I'll have my ashes made into jewelry. But seriously, I'm probably going to do this. There's no harm planning ahead, right? I kind of, that's a cool idea. I didn't know those things existed. I'd have to look them up. Things to avoid saying at a funeral. Welcome back. We rarely do listicles here. But for this month's newsletter, we thought a listicle would be the best way to just deliver this month's advice. What not to say at a funeral? We know figuring out the right thing to say to a grieving friend can be extremely difficult, and since that's such a personal issue, it's hard to give specific advice. Some things will be more comforting to other people. But fortunately, we can deliver a little bit more solid advice on what, to, what not to say to someone who is grieving. So here it is. Funerals, monthlies, top five things not to say. At least they're no longer suffering. <laughs> Jeez. 
<laughs> Even if this is true, no one wants to hear it. It's probably not your place to dictate. Who wants to be told the death of somebody they love is for the best? Were they saved? Oh god, don't do it. Not everyone agrees with your religious views, and not only is it not always comforting, it can also be insulting. They're with the angels now. See above's note, then re then rinse and repeat. Also, see note see note one and two. <laughs> Let me know how I can help. This one's tricky. You want to help, but those in mornings won't always ask for help. If you want help, suggest specific things. For example, I'm free if you need someone to babysit the kids. Actions are better than passive statements. Cook something for them. Take them to their favorite restaurant or buy tickets to see a movie together. I know how you feel. Even if you think so, everybody grieves differently. Don't focus this on yourself. Empathy doesn't involve having to commiserate. Sometimes people will want to hear your experiences, but don't assume they will. Ask first. For a quicker version of this list that can be replied to any situation, don't say stuff just for the sake of saying stuff. Just say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry is can be really comforting. To just have someone acknowledge that you're in pain. And to have someone say, like, I'm just sorry that you're going through this, at least for me, it was just, it was just helpful. Alright, I am comfortable with dealing with this. I don't like the situation, but... I will deal with it. Oh yeah, we gotta massage the body. This is so... weird. <laughs> Insert the eye caps. Glue. Cotton ball. Moisturize. Okay, this is the part I had trouble with before. There we go. Oh, I gotta massage the body. Massage the body or it doesn't work. thing. We will t Mike will take care of Mr. Scott's makeup. Okay. I can't believe you did it. I feel like I should have known, you know? Been able to do something to stop it. There's no way to know. You can't blame yourself. You wouldn't have wanted that. I know, it just hurts. I heard it wasn't going to be an open casket. Surprise is public. Usually funerals for these circumstances are more private. I wish we were closer. I still can't believe this is real. My baby brother should have played more games with him when he asked. Oh. Quiet 
started sobbing. Oh, jeez. I can't leave. Oh, I didn't pay respects. <laughs> Thanks for watching till the end of the video. Consider giving a like or leaving a comment. The YouTube algorithm favors engagement, so doing one or both of those things really helps the channel. There's social media links in the description and a link to my tip jar if you're interested in helping out that way. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the next one.